Good morning, good evening, people. My name is Tony Mitra. I'm sitting in Delta, British Columbia, Canada, and I have with me two very noted uh, healthcare uh, professionals. Uh, one is Dr. Avadesh Pandey, and the other is Dr. Bishwarup Roychaudhuri. Both of them attached to HIIMS of Chandigarh. That's a Hospital and Institute of Integrated Medical Sciences. Hospital because it treats patients. Institute because it trains patients integrated because they do not restrict themselves to allopathic or homeopathic or any one kind of uh, treatment only. And they are doing groundbreaking job uh, in India. So welcome, Dr. Pandey and Dr. Roy Chaudhary. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this talk is about uh, me asking non-doctors, common persons questions about regular uh, illnesses, uh, common illnesses in North America and rest of the world, and if they could be cured without without complicated allopathic uh, medication, and if so, how, and what is the science or the uh, theory behind it? So I will uh, address my first question, uh, that is to do with blood pressure. My question is uh, multifold. What is the common range of blood pressure acceptable to people? I ask in the sense that uh, I, I suspect or some people believe that what was considered common range is now considered very little as common range and everything else uh, needs some kind of medication. And that's why people are forced to take medication where perhaps they don't need to. This is one. Why blood pressure goes high or low? Uh, systolic or diastolic either has uh, has the pulse rate something to do with it uh, and and uh, how to take care of it so that you don't get ill anyway whatever you can tell us about blood pressure thank you very much for asking this question i am mr mitra at the outset i should tell you blood pressure 95% of the blood pressures are called essential hypertension. If you look at the meaning of essential in Google, essential means idiopathic. We do not know the cause of blood pressure. Oh. It is just speculation. Oh. We don't know. So nobody in the world knows what is the cause of blood pressure. There are a very few causes that are known. The first being a renal renovascular hypertension, the second being cardiac origin hypertension. But nonetheless, we have a lot of work on blood pressure. So we can comfortably say that blood pressure is the product of cardiac output into peripheral resistance. So these are the two factors that are responsible for blood pressure. Cardiac output determines the systolic blood pressure Peripheral resistance determines the diastolic blood pressure. So what you are seeing as systolic is because of cardiac output. What you are seeing as diastolic is because of peripheral resistance. So if you can increase the cardiac output or decrease the cardiac output, you can increase or decrease systolic blood pressure. If you can increase or decrease the peripheral resistance, you can increase or decrease the uh, diastolic blood pressure. So in a nutshell, one size fits all is has always been a problem of modern medicine approach. <coughs> so there cannot be one blood pressure range that can fit all. So there are body types which can differ. So blood pressure will be different for different individuals. What could be normal for suppose if there is a uh, known case of kidney failure patient. Now, his blood pressure, if we reduce it to 110 by 70, the, he might die of hypotension because the blood pressure is required to perfuse the organs so that blood can reach each and every end organ or the vital organs in a particular pressure so that blood can reach these organs. So, blood pressure is determined by the body type and it there cannot be one size that fits all. Is my answer to what your question was? There, uh, there were two parts. I think I answered them. Fantastic. Fantastic. Very well explained. I have one follow-up question. Uh, just my common sense question. It may be uh, not very medical, but 
tell me if you think it is relevant. I understand blood uh, arteries and all to be some sort of a highway system for transportation of items to different parts of the body, of which one is oxygen uh, taken from the lungs and, and delivered to the tissues and cells. But, but oxygen is not the only thing that the blood uh, transports around. So could it be that the blood pressure so-called high uh, is, is uh, body's effort to pump more blood around because something is short. Uh, it may not be oxygen. It may be oxygen, but it may be something else and nothing, not, not oxygen uh, that is somehow short, uh, somehow not reaching fast enough to wherever it has to reach. And the, and, the, and the body is trying to increase the speed of the highway, so to speak, uh, so that more stuff can reach there. Could this have any um, a, a, any relevance? It, it could, could it be one of the reasons that uh, that blood pressure is high? And to solve it, I need to increase the nutrient, whatever the, it is lacking, into my food system or into my, uh, into my um, you know, in my, in my diet so that... Uh, the need for blood to rush around and try to find that can be reduced. Uh, is, is that make any sense? Does it make any sense? No, a very good question. And since you are an engineer, I fully well know the, where this question is coming from. <laughs> so I uh, will answer it in an engineering way. Okay. You know, there is a vessel. This vessel has got a capacitance. Yes. The capacitance is the capacity of the pliability of the vessel okay. if this capacitance of the a vessel somehow increases so that the tone of the tone of the nerves supplying the vessel is less then the capacitance increases and the blood pressure falls if the tone yeah. is more then the capacitance increases and the blood pressure goes high it is like suppose if you are watering your plant if you press the pipe, the force of the water goes higher. This is exactly what happens with the vessels. And blood is the real connect. That is the connect between all tissues from your brain to your toe. What is common? Blood. Right. So blood is the connect by which not only oxygen, all nutrients, all hormones, Everything is transported via this blood. Whichever organ requires whatever is taken by that organ and the rest goes on. It's like a relay race. So okay. everything is in the blood and it goes to various organs. So that is a real connect. And it is connected via these vessels. And these vessels are responsible from their capacitance point of view to increase or decrease blood pressure as the need may be at that point in time. Fantastic. Fantastic. No more question on that. Dr. Uh, Roy Chaudhary, uh, my next question is uh, diabetes. It is one of the most common illnesses probably around the world. I'm not an expert. I know uh, in India, many people suffer from it. And I know almost every other person in North America <clears throat> suffers from some degree or other from a perceived disease called diabetes. My wife is one of was one of them. So, what is diabetes? Why it happens, and is there a way of curing it? Really curing it, just not managing it for till till you die, and and not make the health worse without using all this experimental and and really questionable drug. Is it possible, Doctor Rajendri? And if so, how? See, uh, uh, thanks for this question and. Uh... Uh, the the most important thing when we say what is diabetes, I say it is just high amount of sugar in the blood. So uh, and uh, particularly the glucose in the blood, not just the sugar, it is the glucose. Okay. The, we never say blood uh, blood fructose. We say blood glucose. Right. So high amount. When I say high amount, how much high? So all the evidences says that if your sugar in the blood is more than two fifty mg per deciliter, then it can be a range which can be disturbing for other functions of the body. So uh, to consider yourself whether you are a diabetes patient or not, or high blood sugar patient or not, if at all you want to consider this as a medical condition, then you have to check your postprandial blood sugar. And if it is more than 2 kmg per deciliter, then yes, you can say it is on a higher side, high blood sugar. So that is 
what is diabetes right so uh, the parameter which you should keep in mind uh, which can be some relevant uh, uh, of some re relevance uh, for your health that is not 200 not 150 not 100 not 126 it is 250 mg per deciliter post panel not the fasting one fasting can be misleading now, 55 percent of the world population their fasting remains higher than the blood sugar in the whole day blood glucose in the whole day so uh, uh, my definition is anybody having blood sugar consistently more than 250 mg per deciliter can be called as diabetic for example if i'm i'm in a stress for a while then my blood sugar can go high even 300 but that does not mean translate that i'm a diabetic patient i gave a situation to my body and body uh, like blood pressure it increases the blood sugar so but if i consistently keep my blood sugar more than 250 for a long period when i say long period it has to be at least few weeks right then i can say okay now i'm a diabetes patient this is how is what is diabetes now why why it happens that means the answer is uh, sugar or glucose from the wrong source if the glucose uh, or the sugar is from the wrong source it causes a high uh, blood uh, sugar a wrong source means there are two sources from where you can get the glucose one the glucose from the man-made food one glucose from the god-made food there are two glucose which you get man-made or god-made if it is man-made like biscuits like bread right so uh, it will increase the blood sugar if it is god made like fruits like vegetables it will decrease the it will keep the blood sugar under control so uh, as a, a individual as a patient if you decide that today onwards i'll eat only those fruits those those food which are god made nature made your blood sugar if it, even if it is high it will come down right so it has to come down right? Th that is because uh, the uh, the the engineering of the body and engineering of the food made by the god it it, it, it fits exactly but the engineering of the food made by the man, the human, it does not fit. And there uh, it uh, leads to increasing the blood sugar. So that is the second part. And now the third part, how to cure it. See, you said how to cure it without medicine. First of all, with medicine, no, nobody has cured ever. Right? In the history of diabetes, there is not a single person who would cure or who could control uh, blood sugar with drugs. Neither cure nor even control. When I say control, I mean that by taking drugs, uh, uh, definite dose of drug, I am able to manage a blood sugar at a particular level for the rest of my life. But that is not happening, right? So uh, you have to keep on increasing the dose. That means you are not able to control with the drugs as well. So uh, now, how to cure it? Cure is very simple, and I can make it simple with just one simple diet. We call it DIP diet, right? Forget about what is the full form of it. Of it. Just remember three steps in next one minute. Step one: decide that till 12 noon. Whatever goes inside the mouth, let it be only fruits. About three to four different kinds of fruits will be better, like mango or it can be uh, papaya or orange or pineapple. Any name of fruits, let it be fruits. How much? Your, like your body weight. My body weight is 70 kg. I'll put one more zero. 700 grams at least minimum. It can be more than that. It is still better. Step one. This means till 12 noon, I'm not allowed to eat anything else. Now coming to lunch. Before you sit for lunch and dinner, the second rule, you add uh, salad, uh, that is raw vegetable, four kinds, tomato, cucumber, radish, carrot, your body weight, right, and into five. And my body weight, 70 kg into five, that becomes 350 grams. That is the dosage of, medicine. I call it food or medicine. Only that it will work, right? 350 grams or more for me. And after that, I can eat my uh, traditional vegetarian food, uh, roti, sabji, dal, chawal, whatever you want to eat, whatever is traditional vegetarian food, you go for it. Uh, that is lunch and the same as the dinner. Dinner, try to finish by sunset or at most by 8, 8 p.m. And the final thing, avoid anything which comes out of animal, like dairy products, like egg, meat. Avoid anything which comes out of factory, like bread, biscuit, cakes, etc. So whatever I just told, if you can do it, it is a warning that within the first three days, your blood sugar will drop to an extent that where you will be forced to taper down the medication, you have to, you will be forced to taper down the insulin if you are taking insulin by at least 40%. If you don't do it, you will lead to hypoglycemic state. So, uh, very clearly, the moment you start doing it, your blood sugar will very quickly start coming in control. So, this is a sure shot way uh, to uh, cure uh, your, uh, your this medical condition. It is not a disease, it's just a medical condition, a temporary condition. But if you 
keep on doing certain things in certain way for a permanent long term your body will react in certain way for a long term basis which may seems to be permanent diabetes is a temporary phenomena which you can switch off in uh, one to three days 72 hours itself by changing the way as i just suggested so that is the complete story about diabetes fantastic fantastic dr achindra i have two follow up questions quick ones if you don't mind one of them is people in north america do not use the unit uh, you mentioned 250 or 100 uh, 200 they use mmol where the readings are much lower so what would be <coughs> the approximate uh, un unit in mmol for 250 in india it is 14 14 millimol 14 15 in millimol okay so that is the first 14. one and the second question was uh, No, oh, I forgot what is the second question. As you were talking about it, I was thinking. Oh yes, oh yes, yes. About the sugars. Now, could it be? I am a thinking person. When you, when I hear something, some questions automatically start rattling in my brain, and I want to find the answer. The reason the body is, let us say, unable to process properly man-made sugars, but is able to process pretty well God-made sugars. Could this be? linked with our evolution because humans uh, last 2 million years have had only been used to sugars provided by nature and we were exposed to man made sugars is only say 200 years and evolution doesn't work that fast pace so therefore we are having problems could that be one of the answer uh, i don't think so why it is because this means that down the line <laughs> can we expect that after 10000 e years eating this way our body will evolve i don't think so the real reason is why the body is not able to process the man made sugar because it is uh, the man made sugar it gets absorbed by the stomach and the god made sugar it get digested by the stomach so when you take any drug it is it body absorbs it do not digest but when you take any food body digest the thing body absorb that causes instant rise in blood sugar right if it is a glucose right so that causes increase so remember the difference between drug and food and food always we digest and drug always we absorb the stomach absorbs right there is no digestion happens so the refined food comes in the drug category because it is refined so since it is refined the job of the stomach is not there so it goes to stomach and directly bypassing the stomach it can go in the blood stream this means before the stomach can signal the pancreas and the rest of the body that food is coming nutrition is coming the nutrition already available and body is not prepared to handle it so that is the main cause this means whatever you eat if it is absorbed it is in the drug category so refined food biscuit is a drug it is not a, no no not not a food because food has to be absorbed right so uh, or we can say these are partial foods because partially a biscuit can be absorbed and partially it is it is digested so digestion happens and no diabetes absorption happens there will be diabetes oh fantastic okay so that that answers the third question the 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 disease that is now so common around the world cancer uh, in our childhood we used to consider it old man's disease nowadays it is coming to i believe even to two year old kids uh, for whatever reason i think it's called karkat rog uh, in childhood i remember that uh, in india so uh, what is this uh, illness I, i have learned that there is cancer is not one illness it's a it's a bag full of uh, all kinds of uh, problems that are uh that are illnesses it is not infectious it is in, uh, it generates internally you cannot in, uh, give somebody cancer by living in the same room with him or her so uh, and it is virtually incurable according to the allopathic medical science so to speak and more often than not it's a killer slow killer but a killer uh, sometimes even fast killer so what is cancer can it be cured and if so how i will take this question sir thank you for asking this question and i will take what dr bisrup 
where he left, I'll take it from there. I usually tell my patients who are diabetics, you have to be lucky not to die of a heart attack. Oh. Because you are definitely going to get cancer. Oh. So diabetes, if people thought that, you know, oh, it's okay to keep the blood sugar normal by taking drugs and my blood sugar is normal and I'm healthy, be prepared. You have to be lucky not to die of a heart attack because you are definitely going to get cancer. These are the two bad ways that most of the 85 to 90 percent of these patients are going to go through. So it is not good to just to keep the blood sugar normal by taking drugs and things like that. So cancer, cancer is called mitotic pathology. Mitosis is physiology. Mitosis is one cell multiplies into two. That is mitosis. Okay. When mitosis physiology becomes pathological, it is called mitotic pathology. So cancer is a mitotic pathology, which means the multiplication was either not proper or it is much more than what is warranted by the body. Which means there are some processes in the body, there are some rules that are to be followed. This cell that is undergoing mitotic pathology is a terrorist cell. It does not follow any rules of the body. So it multiplies erroneously and uh, incessantly it keeps on multiplying. At what cost? It takes the food from the body. The body is starved of food and the cancer grows. So you would see most of these patients, they are eating, their body becomes thinner and the tumor keeps on progressing because the metabolism is stolen by these cancer cells and they take up and they keep on multiplying and multiplying and multiplying and bodies checks and balances which otherwise would have told them to stop are not working anymore which means this terrorist cell is not obeying any laws that the body had made for the that these hundred trillion cells had made for themselves that i'm going to stay as lungs because if suppose there is a lung car lung carcinoma if it does not get place to grow there it goes somewhere else and starts growing there that is why that is what we say metastasis because it never loses the power of growth and the checks and balances which the body had to actually curtail this is lost that is called apoptosis and the power of apoptosis is lost by these cells and so they uh, you become cancer cells and they grow incessantly. That is what is cancer. Did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I think uh, there was a, there is a storm in this area. So the internet got disconnected for a few seconds and we got disconnected. Okay. Uh, qu quickly. Uh, I, I have been in touch with uh, a couple of uh, cutting edge scientists in USA while I was uh, studying the effects of glyphosate and what exactly it does to the immune system. Uh, I learned from one who is a cellular level biologist with knowledge of uh, DNA or uh, epigenetic effects on the body. And he was explaining it more or less like you, but at a, at a different level. I will just quickly repeat it. He was telling me that it was a a genetic disorder within a cell and ap apoptosis, the cells are regulated and normally programmed to eventually die to be replaced with something else. That is one part. The other part is DNA inside the cells have many actions which are not permanent. They can be switched on for at some time and it will do those things and then switch off. So it will stop doing those things. So multiplication is also a function that can be switched on at the right time and kept off other times. Now, one way of, of he's explaining cancer is a rogue cell or cell whose DNA has been tampered with epigenetically through toxic, whatever reason, so that the multiplication switch has been turned on and jammed on. It cannot be switched off. And then it is recklessly multiplying and whatever it multiplies, 
that one is also inheriting the same genetic defect and there also the multiplication switch is jammed and this is forever so so does it make any sense i mean uh, that was <laughs> way of explaining to me how a rogue machine keeps running and you cannot shut it off i kind of agree with what you just said but i'll add a caveat to it i have okay. a caveat to add to this okay the caveat is what you just said the genetic basis and the genes are switched on and switched off the genes don't decide whether they are switched on or switched off no they follow the environment that yeah. calls the shots so genes load the gun environment pulls the trigger yeah is a yeah, better way true. of no that's true the genes activity. don't decide on them when to switch no. it on switch it off it, they get instruction no. from the body but when yes. the switch is damaged that no matter what instruction you give it cannot switch itself off this is when you have a problem well that is one way of looking at it or explaining it to somebody but what happens is fortunately if the if the gene cannot be turned off it can be killed by the individual's own immune system yes so yes. the latest that's, yeah, that's the three pronged the three pronged approach to cancer how to cure cancer if you remember 1970 when nick carter was the president of the us after the second world war mm -hmm. he declared a war on cancer so from mm -hmm. there till now we have reached a stage wherein whatever we are doing we are on the kill phenomenon of a terrorist cancer cell is a terrorist cell and we are on the kill phenomenon surgery is what cut it out chemotherapy is what poison it radiotherapy is what burn it so we are on the kill phenomenon now one simple question one counter question that i want to ask you is has killing a terrorist killed terrorism if if it has not similarly how can killing a terrorist cell kill cancer the philosophy of cancer needs to be attacked which is the second step where we go so how can this happen so what happened was after surgery radiotherapy chemotherapy genetic genetics was for 10 years we did gene mapping what was the conclusion the conclusion was if there is a cancer if two people are ha having the same cancer the genetic difference between these two people having the same cancer the same histopathological cancer could be 10000 times different in x than in y and 10000 drugs made only for x 10000 drugs made only for y is not possible sir no. so this genetic mapping and the gene gene mediated disease forms were shelved historically so now what has what is the latest as far as cancer is concerned is immunotherapy wherein you boost the immune system of the patient and the immune system knows too well because this remember this terrorist cell would not have escaped the immune system of the body but unfortunately since it is our own cell which knows the nooks and corners of the immune system how the immune system kills it can dodge the immune system it has the power since it is our own cell it can dodge the immune system so immune system treats any cancerous cell as a foreign cell as a non entity so if you can boost the immune system to such an extent that it cures it kills the cancer cancer can be cured that answers your second part of the question how to cure it how to approach it so the only approach and the best approach that can be is immunotherapy which modern medicine has recognized now and immunotherapy is in the market there are drugs which uh, uh, boost the immune system whether they work or they don't work that is a separate topic we can discuss but the philosophy is right the philosophy is if the immune system is boosted yes cancer can be cured yes it can be cured and that seems to be the only way if we go forward with this disease actually what you said dr pande is quite similar to what this gentleman told me 
although he is Western, uh, he did say that the only way we can cure uh, this system is to leave our immune system alone. And it is an unbelievably sophisticated design. Uh, if you don't tamper with it, it will figure out what exactly is your problem. And they will attach, attack it cell by cell if you just leave it alone. He also told me when I when I once mentioned uh, knowing Indian um, people practicing Ayurveda and all that, he said he actually is an avid reader of Ayurveda, but he wished he could he somebody taught him Sanskrit because he would give his right arm to be able to learn it from its original script. <laughs> that was Doctor. Um, uh, Dr. Anthony Samsel, and anyway, so that's uh, that 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 answers most of the questions. So, would you say that boosting the immune system, one of the best, uh, the first steps should be stop questionable medic medical medical uh, uh, medical procedures and drugs, and two, stop eating questionable food. You'll be surprised, sir. Uh, in this. In the recent Corona times, talking about the immune system has has become a fashion in all TV shows, in all uh, social media network. They will talk about the immune system. It is the most saliable thing ever as of today. If there is something to sell, they can sell as immune system or boosting the immune system and things like that. You'll be surprised how the immune system gets boosted. People think that it will get uh, boosted by uh, curcumin, by uh, uh, ginger, by ginseng, by this, by chavan prash, by so many things. You'll be surprised the best way to boost the immune system is eat nothing. Fasting <laughs> is the best way to boost the immune system. So, you know, it is actually contrary to what the world believes, unfortunately. Fasting is the best way. Why I am telling you this is 2016 Nobel Prize. Fasting kills cancer. Was given to one doctor from uh, Japan. What was the topic? The topic was fasting kills cancer. Autophagy was the uh, topic on which Nobel Prize was given to him. So the crux was fasting kills cancer. Yes, sir. Wonderful. Absolutely. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, the last question of the day is autoimmune disease. Uh, I came to know about it 20 years ago, uh, actually studying glyphosate. I, I was increasingly concerned about it. And uh, I roughly understand an autoimmune disease is not one disease, but an umbrella of maybe hundreds or even thousands and, and disease that has not yet been known to us, but is going to be known uh, sometime in future, all of them under one condition, our immune system has gone out of whack, out of control. And instead of attacking intruders, unwanted intruders, it starts attacking our own body one way or another, and thus creating the disease. These are called autoimmune disease. I learned that rheumatoid arthritis is one. Uh, which is very well known, used to be uh, old men's disease. And now there is endless number of new ones that has come that didn't exist before. So uh, yeah, uh, autism is considered an autoimmune disease, for instance. Uh, celiac, Crohn, uh, all kinds of uh, uh, stomach ailments, uh, inflammatory stomach, uh, which is the beginning of all kinds of problems, is considered an autoimmune disease. And these are runaway cases in North America, runaway. I think Indian standards are not yet caught up with it, although Indians are trying very hard to ape the West. So what do you say about autoimmune disease and what can you do? What can one do to deal with this rising cases of new, new diseases coming up under the umbrella? Yeah, great question, sir. And uh, I'll start with my own example. Uh, let's say, first of all, what is autoimmune disease? It is well understood from the name itself. This means that your immunity is attacking your, your, your healthy cells, believing it to be an enemy. So why the immunity will do, or, or most important, when the immunity will do? So we all are allergic to certain kind of food. For example, in my case, uh, 
being from a bengali family we have been uh, non vegetarian now i am a vegan for last 15 years before that i i, I used to have animal food so uh, if, if i go back to that memory prawn a kind of food whenever i used to take it causes all kind of uh, reactions in my on my tongue and in the body and all kind of itching instantly so that, that is autoimmune reaction but what i do if i instead of that in, in spite of that uh, knowing that it is causing a reaction if i continue to include that in my food uh, for a long long period even for a short term period this means that disease uh, what we call as autoimmune it, it will persist and it will be too much damaging for uh, the body various organ also so this means if i want today i can create autoimmune disease in my body that is uh, i have to choose which is the food which is causing allergy to me and then deciding let me not discontinue this food let me give this food two times a day three times a day and i will ensure that i can be autoimmune disease patient that is one way second way could be okay i realize that this particular food is causing that uh, reaction i stop eating that i switch off the autoimmune disease in one day it is all like a switch off switch on for example diabetes type 1 known as autoimmune disease now uh, uh, we have been working uh, with the diabetes type 1 children it has been more than a decade i've been working with them and 40% of my patients they are of insulin 40% of my patients even a case study of a patient who was of uh, uh, diabetes type 1 for about as much as 7 years right here where i'm sitting near to the hospital that is in mahauli right and after 7 years when we switch to all certain food one animal protein source like dairy product animal food number two uh, gluten uh, wheat grains right uh, and number three all kind of refined food when we stopped all this the autoimmune reaction stopped and a need to take insulin it uh, reduced to nil and now it had been already more than 3 and 1/2 years she had been off insulin after continuously taking insulin for as much as 7 years uh, when she was diagnosed there was she was diagnosed as diabetes type 1 patients so what i mean to say uh, i say that autoimmune disease is by choice unknowingly by choice you choose to consume certain kind of food which is causing reaction but unaware that this is the food which are the culprit you keep on giving it to the feeding it to the body and as a result the switch of autoimmune disease kept it on forcefully and you think that you are sick uh, of some unknown cause so uh, people who are listening to us uh, my, my answer is you stop all kind of animal food you stop all kind of refined food you stop anything which is having gluten if you can do these three you will see the reversal of any kind of or many kind of autoimmune disease that is what i have seen consistently for diabetes type 1 patient even for autism patients and all kind of Uh, irritable bowel syndrome also you can call what kind of autoimmune disease if you can want to call it so consistently we have seen a measurable amount of result and that too within 24 hours of stopping these kind of food so it is autoimmune disease is not by chance it is by choice right and well, one more factor can be injecting something including vaccines they also may damage it may uh, trigger the autoimmune response so anything unnatural you stop your body will switch off the autoimmune disease if by that time already some damage has happened irreparable damage then there may be some other consequences but yes uh, it can be switched off fantastic i have no more questions and if two of you uh, have any last word you can say i i i'm being pressured by our uh, wide circle of uh, uh, people that know me uh, to uh promote these ideas a little bit more to take some course to learn uh, and and to help people and all that there is a rising awareness of uh, this uh, this going on uh, across uh, at least the western world to quite a lot of people so this uh, this issue is, is is going to be followed up it looks like any last words sir? i have i am i am completely satisfied i have some more questions but we can do it on another time regarding definition of food but we we'll leave that aside regarding so, the last thing that you said sir regarding the courses that uh, 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 we uh, from hii 
MS. We are planning courses uh, for uh, the national and international uh, people. And uh, uh, our basic aim is not to teach the taught. You understand what I mean? Our basic aim is not to teach the taught. Like the doctors, they are already taught. You cannot teach them. Or it is very difficult to teach them, actually. The most needy, the most needy for this knowledge are the patients, are the people, the general population. So we will be very interested if anything like that can be done, wherein we collect a few group of people who are really interested to know and to learn, to maintain their life well. We'll be very interested to teach them. And we do have courses. We can design a few more for the Western population. And we do have, we, we still, we still, uh, as I speak, we do have courses where things can be taken up. I have actually already paid uh, Dr. Vishirup's uh, organization. The training has not started, but I already paid. I don't even know whether I paid for the right course or not. Uh, but it's an advanced nutrition yeah, that course. Is the right course. Yeah, that is the most important. Okay, so that, right that's course. it. But, uh, but uh, uh, about uh, if HIIMS is offering an uh, integrated package with all uh, all your input, uh, yeah, that would be very interesting for uh, people to know. Uh, about the doctors, I was, was, was once uh, invited by the Calcutta, uh, the doctors of the Calcutta Medical College, <clears throat> who came to see me at my home to learn more about the way glyphosate affects. I was at that time in India and I was being asked to speak here and there. And this gentleman was very impressed. I will not take his name because it might put him in trouble. He was very impressed and he wanted me to address the students and faculty at Calcutta Medical College. I said, Hamko nahi jana ho that because they're all doctors and I don't want to face them and I don't want to get in trouble. It's not my, I'm not a doctor. So he said, no, no, don't worry. I'll stand next to you and, and all that. They need to know all these people. They need to know there are such, certain things that uh, drugs uh, uh, cannot cure. You're, 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 you're removing toxicity cures. Uh, so uh, so uh, anyway, I kind of agreed under pressure. And it was it didn't happen. After, after seven days, this gentleman called up saying that the board refused to allow it. So they don't want doctors to know. So true, this, true. Is, this is, I came to know firsthand how medical system works. And so in the time that everybody needs to be their own doctor. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. I am very, very thankful. I will put it up. I'll edit it, remove that blank space in the middle. And uh, there is a rising number of people who are quite interested uh, uh, to follow. I also grow my own organic food. I also fought with the Canadian government. I have a multifaceted personality and that is one way or another attracts uh, a lot of uh, Western people. Unfortunately, Indians are more busy in copying the West and the West is more busy trying to learn from the East. It's all reverse direction is going. So thank you so much. Sir. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Yeah.